Hey there. I'm going to give you a quick and dirty tutorial on how to use the National Centers for Inf Environmental Information website. This is a fantastic resource for researching uh, historical temperature and precipitation data, but the website's not user friendly. So this guide will hopefully just sort of save you some time when you're doing research for your own backpacking trips in order to better understand the conditions that you'll likely be up against. So I will share this particular link, but this is going to be your starting point. And you are most interested in the normals, these climate normals from 1981 to 2010. Uh, these are updated every 10 years. And uh, in theory, in the next year or two, we should have a new set of normals from 1991 to 2010. And since the climate is changing, has been changing, the more recent normals uh, or, a, or a more updated set of normals would be would give you better information. So this is a map of uh, weather stations where this data is available. And um, I you can pick either the uh, daily climate normals or the monthly climate normals. Um, I think that the, the daily is probably a little overkill. Um, the monthly is, is probably just fine. So go ahead and zoom in on your route. And suppose that I was planning a route in the Front Range of Colorado. And this is uh, just to orient you. Here's Rocky Mountain National Park. This is Trail Ridge Road. Uh, this is the Indian Peaks Wilderness here. And then this is the James Peak Wilderness. And the Continental Divide is this ridge line that you can see right here. And if I was planning a, a route um, along the Continental Divide, you'll notice that there are actually there are no weather stations along the divide itself. So there's a weather station in Estes Park. There's a weather station in Grand Lake. Uh, this is along the peak to peak outside of Ward. There's one close to Bertha, uh, to the summit of Bertha Pass, but this is actually closer to Winter Park. And the issue with picking a weather station that's not on the route is that you're just not going to get the data won't be as relevant. Um, especially in the West, the temperatures and the precipitation is greatly influenced by the elevation and also the geographic positioning. Uh, so, um, so you want to uh, you want data that's specific to your route as you can get. Um, here in the state of Colorado, when I'm planning a, a trip on the Front Range, um, I actually usually look at a weather station that's um, on Fremont Pass, which is just outside of Leadville, because it's at 11,000 feet. And it's on top of a high ridge. So that data, I feel like, is a little bit more relevant to what we experience on the Front Range uh, versus, say, pulling data out of like Grand Lake at 9,000 feet when I'm going to be at 13. So in order to get into the data, you go ahead and hit this uh, wrench icon, which will bring up some map tools. Go ahead and click on the Identify button. And you can go ahead and then click on a weather station. Um, not all weather stations are going to have um, like the data that you want, so you might need to poke around a little bit. I go ahead and click on the station details, and that brings me up with a new page. There are two ways to get at the data from here. One option is if, if this is the only data that, data that I want, you just go ahead and come, come over here and select 2010. This data is not exclusive to 2010. It's really the climate normal data set that's ending in 2010. And then I view the data, and it will bring up a separate PDF. And on the first page here, I have my temperature data. So for example, um, during the month of June, the high, high average temperature at this particular location is 58 degrees, and the average low temperature is 33 degrees. Uh, there is also some important um, information about the, about the weather station. So it's at 11,000 feet, it gives you the lat long. Um, and you can go ahead and use that information to speculate about the actual weather or climate along your route. So for example, if I was planning a route at 13,000 feet, which is almost 2,000 feet higher than this ridge, I would assume that it would be uh, roughly about 8 degrees colder um, at 13,000 feet than indicated here. General rule of thumb is um, th 3 to 5 degrees per 1,000 vertical feet of elevation change. Use that three degree number when you're in a, a lower elevations and more humid climates. Use that five degree number when you are at higher elevations and uh, in more arid climates. So here you have the temperature data. 
And then your precipitation data is on the next page. And you'll, you can see, so for, say for uh, the month of July, there's an average of 2.42 inches of rain uh, per month or for the entire month. Um, that's not a whole lot of moisture. Um, when I start to see numbers like four, five, six, um, that is, that's indicating pretty wet conditions. But when you see less than an inch of rain per month, that's very dry. Uh, one to two inches, that's still not very much. When you start getting into two inches, that, that's indicating that there's probably some pretty um, heavy rainfall at times. Um, so those are your temperature and precipitation data. If, you're, if you understand statistics, you can look over um, in some of these other columns to understand uh, the variation month to month or like the variation of what you actually might encounter relative to what the normal is. Um, and, um, but again, you kind of have to understand statistics to know some of that. And I don't think for the purpose of backpacking that it's, that it's super relevant. Um, when you look at 2.42 inches of rain, that basically means that you need rain there. <laughs> as opposed to like an inch of rain, uh, less than an inch of rain, you're like, well, I could, might be able to leave my rain here in the car. And when you have like six inches of rain in a month, that indicates you should probably expect to get rain on. You could get rain on for your entire trip. So these are the monthly normals. You also could pull, actually, let me back up. Um, the other way to get data, um, so back to this, this page right here, is that you can, um, you can add it to your cart. And this would be useful if you were planning on getting data from multiple weather stations. It just prevents you from having to go through one by one. So you go ahead and add it to your cart, then you go to your cart and, and this is a free service. So even though they're using a cart feature, um, it's still gonna be free. So I'll click 2010, I um, add my email and they'll send me an email when my order is ready. So those are the, this is, I just did the monthly. If you're interested in knowing what the daily is like, it's just it just the the data is just more granular. So I go ahead and click on the Climax Mine again, and I open this up. The 2000s, the 1981 to 2010 uh, climate normal. Suppose I'm going to do this trip in July. This will bring up a PDF for me, and then now this is a daily high and low, average high and low for this particular location. Um, it can't give you a it can't give you a a um, a daily precip number, so it just gives it to you for the entire month. But you'll notice there is like a chance of precipitation, which which is useful, and you'll notice that the chance of precipitation increases through the month of June, increases all the way through uh, July, and it looks like it tops out at the beginning of August which coincides with our most active monsoon pattern. So basically like on average around August 10th, you have 50% chance of precip. So this is a useful number to be looking at. Okay, well, I hope that was quick and dirty enough for you. Um, hopefully that will help you to navigate uh, this really great resource uh, that could use a little bit of um, an improvement on the user-friendly friendly department. Thanks for tuning in.